Do you have to have a felony to go here? Uh, it helps, but you don't need one. <laughs> you get street cred, but no, you don't need it. Here, you know what? I'm going to summarize the new set for you is everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. So that's just kind of, everybody can come in and uh, we're, we're going to love on you. And uh, But felonies do help. No matter who you are, what you are, where you've been or what you've done. All are welcome at Set Free. These Set Free pastors have a hardcore past. It took an all-loving God to forgive. Meet Taz and Chief. Oh man, I got a picture of one of my dear friends right here. Frankenstein. Yeah. This man, man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart, and this guy's heart is full of the love of Jesus, so I'm glad to be called his friend. Yes. What's your name? Well, they call me Taz, but uh, I'm just here at the party tonight, set free grand opening, new location. Got Chief, the crew, everybody. Hope we have a good time, and uh, God uh, is gonna do some things tonight. Would, would you let you in 20 years ago? Pro no. I wouldn't. I would be suspect. I'd have somebody follow me like the, the big guy. I, you know, I would. Uh, no, I, I probably wouldn't. No. Yeah, would. I mean, like, come on now. Thirty years ago, if Phil Aguilar showed up here with the boys, and Taz showed up, and there's another, who's going to let him in? I mean, churches don't want don't want guys like set free soldiers. Well, deep down inside, I know that every boy and girl, everybody growing up, wants to meet a biker and give him a hug. Oh, it's going down. It's going down. We've been preparing. We're ready. A little, little new location celebration, and uh, we're just going to bring the love to Jesus to Claremont and beyond. What's the address here? 655 Balboa Ave, 92111. Uh, we're a uh, host churches, communion church, plenty of parking, little, little food, a lot of Jesus, good fellowship, good people. Check it out. I've known Taz for 30 years since I've been 18. Yeah, what was Taz like when you were 18? Well, a big teddy bear, loving, kind, community, you know, organizer. I, I saw him as such. So. We're going to see how God reveals his mystery in the invisible and just see how he unfolds things in people's lives and how he can work his mysterious ways and his thread through relationships through the children that he loved and that's everyone he came to love. He, you know, his son died for us. Because I know what being locked up did for me. So here I am locked up in there and God spoke to me. Oh, how cool, boy. I don't know about you all, but like I said, when I'm not feeling well, I'm on my sick bed, my prayer life increases. Yeah. When I'm going through troubled times financially, my prayer life increases. I need things to happen to make me move. Yeah. So sure enough, it happened. I'm on a million dollar bail there. Amen. That was a little over 15 years ago, and I promise you, as God is my witness today, I haven't veered to the right, I haven't veered to the left, but baby steps for the last 15 years. Yeah. Moving forward. Moving forward. Even when we give our life to Christ, if we take our eye off the prize, man, I'm telling you, one bad decision. A dear friend of mine taught me this saying, who's ever got your ear, has got your future. Right. As a man or woman thinketh, so are we. What are you feeding your mind? What podcasts are you listening to? What people are you hanging out with? Who are you rolling with? Who's part of your crew? Who's part of your family? What's going on inside that beautiful mind that God's given to us? Right. I mean, for myself, I had to change my whole routine again. So the first thing I do every single morning, and hopefully you do too, get a checkup from them. Get rid of that stinking. Thinking. Get a new mindset. Then I slowly hobble over to the bathroom. I look in the mirror, and I realize it's that person in the mirror. That's who I got to watch out for. Right. Amen. I'm not worried about anybody else messing up my day. It's that one I look at in the mirror. That's right. And I let them know. Today, for instance, Thursday, game day. Yeah. yeah. 
Super Bowl Thursday. Yeah. This ain't just a regular day for me. This counts. Swing. You know what I mean? Every day counts big time in our life, especially when you can almost count the time. Yeah. I get ready. He or she that fails to plan, plans to what? Fail. We gotta have a strategy for the day. I'm a professional forgiver. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what you do or say my way, I'm not gonna let you or anybody else have free rent in my mind. Yeah. I'm at peace. There ain't nobody on this planet I'm upset with, angry with, I'm not going to talk about Biden all day long, or Obama, or your mama. It's not going to happen. <laughs> let people know as, as quickly as I can that, hey, I'm just a rat. Telling all the other rats where the cheese is at. <laughs> I know what a filthy wretch of a sinner I am. And all the things God forgive me. But the cool part of it, he says, those that have been forgiven much, Love much. Man, I work with addicts every day and they tell me after they're clean for 30 days, I'm, I'm going to go back to my house and get my car. How do you still, what kind of addict are you? Do you still have a car? Your mom talks to you? How does that happen? My favorite targets is a heroin addict or mom's. And my crippled grandfather, he had one leg in the house. I robbed him quickly. I knew he couldn't catch me. <laughs> I mean, you've been forgiven much. You can't forget that. Oh, God. That's all been wiped out. A lot of people go, well, you don't deserve to go to heaven. You're not swimming. You got it. You got it. For by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourself. It's a gift from God. Imagine that. God's got that gift for all of us here tonight. Yeah. A free gift. Man, and people said, well, I heard you do this. I heard, you're absolutely right. I was guilty, but God dropped all the charges. Amen. All of us are facing things that are of Mount Everest proportions. And you're not going to see any mountain climbers climb that mountain by themselves. We need a team. We all need leaders, mentors, sponsors, friends, pastors, big brothers, big sisters, whatever it is, like I said, <coughs> people we can share too. And more often than not, let me tell you, uh, people you meet, they get what you're going through. They're going through it too. And each and every one of us can make a difference in somebody's life. Amen. Somebody's life. Think about who's on your hit list that you want to make a difference in their life. Zero in on them. You can pray for them and nothing, nobody can stop that at all. And then you can just keep loving on people. Just watch what God can do. I'm looking for these younger cats, like the Tazas. There's a whole new breed being raised up, you know? Yeah. And that's what it is. I mean, wherever, you're on, wherever you are on that list, like I said, the older the new, share what you know with somebody else. Being there for them, you know? And being that person that said, hey, give me a call, you know? Helping them with that job situation, whatever it might be. And lastly, I never thought, I'm one of the people like that, I never thought I'd reach this stage in my life. I got six kids, 23 grandkids. Wow. What a cool thing just to, a place to open up, a safe place to meet. You know, a place to be able to, you know, bring your friends and family, that type of thing. And it all starts with each of us individually. Being that soldier, that soldierette for the Lord. But it takes us making that commitment first. Getting the power from on high. Getting that, man, you know, there's different, I don't like that girl, I don't like that guy, I don't, hey, you know, working on that, asking God to help us out. Yeah. It takes time, it takes time. We're all a work in progress. There's riches inside of each other, but what I found out is we need others to help dig that treasure out of us. It's been covered up with drugs, alcohol, this and that. So I watched a black and white television set back in my days. Back in my days, my favorite show was a show called Father Knows Best. Your shows for your kids nowadays are Who's Your Daddy? It's a little bit different. <laughs> so as I would watch that TV program, 
I wanted my life to be like it is on TV. You know how social media affects you and you want to be like the people on TV? I wanted my life to be like that, Mom. Dad, Dad goes to work, comes home, Mom kisses him, got something to eat, tells Beaver and Trevor, you know, hey, be good little kids, all that stuff. And everything's good. But in my household, like maybe in your households, it wasn't that way. And in my household, the next thing I'm doing, I'm watching Father Knows Best on TV, but I'm watching violence in the house. My dad grabbed my mom, throwing her against the wall. Horrible stuff for a young kid. An amen or no amen. 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 amen? So here I am, I'm growing up in that life, and I'm a little, getting a little upset inside, and I'm looking for somebody to blame, because I found out in life, uh, we all like to be the victim. Right. Uh, poor me, poor, poor me, poor me, another drink. Man, I'm looking for love and all the what? Right. I go down to the street corner, some of the fellows are about a few years older than me, or there, and I tell them my situation. They tell me, smoke this, drink this. Next thing you know, I'm doing drugs to cover up that situation like so many of us in this room have done before, I'm sure. And I went on my 15 year rap page. Next thing you know, and I'm 30 years old, and uh, God got a hold of my life. I didn't know it was God at the time. Got a hold of my life and said, I'd like to talk to you, son. I need to slow you down. So there I was, like I said, I need to be taught lessons, so I ended up over at Chino State Prison. What a great place to be. Yeah. You know? I'm one of those people, ain't nobody ever going to tell me nothing. I end up in a place where they're telling me everything, you know? I'm listening to that message, getting out of my cell, but this man shared about the person of Jesus. And he shared how that Jesus loved us so much and explained that it didn't matter what you've done, that if you receive Christ, he would forgive you of all the garbage you've done. And I found that hard to believe, but I was always looking for a good deal. I was looking for something to come up on. And I was in pain. I was hurting. Everybody I said that I loved, that burnt. And uh, I don't need to go into the details of it, but I was a dirty, low, down, no good, worthless, hope to die, dope fiend. And uh, just 100% is all about my life. But while I was there, I got a chance to take a look inside. And as that man spoke that message that day, inside I was ready. I was sick and tired of what? Being sick, sick and tired. tired. That was me too. Amen. Right there. And then that man put a challenge out. He goes, if anybody in here would like to give their life to Jesus, stand right now. Come on. Now, I wasn't ready for that. I wanted, at that time I was thinking about, I'd like to be an undercover Christian. <laughs> you know, a secret service. Well, I don't want to tell anybody, well, just keep it on the low. You know what I mean? <laughs> But then the man said, you know, if you're ashamed of Jesus, he pulled that stuff out of the car. Oh, 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 he pulled a good one on me. You know, it was like he put his finger out there and it was like right on my nose. He says, uh, no, you need to, to stand up. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Be bold for the Lord. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm doing time with all these characters here. And I'm the last thing I want to hear any of them say, because I've never met any what I call stand up Christian people. I just didn't know any. And uh, so I had some picture of Christians just being weak. But that day, now I know what it was and who it was, but that day I stood up for the Lord Amen. and something happened inside that I can't describe in words, but something happened inside, but I knew in my knower that I made a deal with God. And a lot of people have told me that the prayer I said wasn't a good enough prayer, but what I found out is God doesn't read lips, He reads hearts. He knew I was serious on that decision that day. So here I am, I start walking down the, the hallway back to myself, and sure enough, I got hit up. A couple people go, hey man, were you just jiving that preacher? And then I started getting his face, you know, because remember, I'm brand new, I'm a born again believer for 10 minutes. I'm challenged, you know. And he goes, you know, are you serious about that? Were you just making stuff up? And I go, no. You know, and I'm going to serve him the rest of my life. You got a problem with that? I'm that guy. Next couple of years, then I started a group. My first group was uh, called God's Game. You know, and in prison, like I said, and I rolled with the crew. I, everything I read about Jesus rolled with the crew. Every moment counts. I used to be real concerned with how cool I looked when I walked across the room. Now I'm just happy to get on the other side of the room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh 
when I wake up in the morning, I don't jump out of bed. It's a resurrection. One leg at a time. There's a verse that says, be content no matter what state you're in. Now, I put it as, no matter what state prison you're in. We're learning there to be content. And then there's another verse that says, but none of these things move me, neither do I count my life dear. So, but I'm going to finish the course Yeah. Amen. that God's put me on, and I'm going to finish it. Now, this part I like, I'm going to finish it with, with joy. Amen. I'm going to finish with joy. We all got a sad story, a country song. We lost our dog, pickup truck, and all that stuff, and hopefully we get it back. We all got that story. But like I said, what do we do once we start doing Jesus? So here we are, we're planning a new church. Amen. I come from the old school where we didn't call in sick, we crawl in sick. sick. That's right. <laughs> Nowadays, everybody, I don't feel good. The pandemic, I think I got this virus. I got one of my friends that's here tonight. This guy's over at the house. We didn't have our cooler uh, bottle of water. Bottle of water's in the cooler. The guy goes, hey, uh, Chief, we don't have any water there. And I go, well, drink out of the hose. And he goes, that's unhealthy. <laughs> you were on fentanyl last week and all of a sudden you, all of a sudden you care about the... Anyway, I thought I was a man of faith back when I was a heroin addict. I was a man of faith. I never saved to wake up for the next day. No. <laughs> I had faith that when I got up the next day, I'm going to knock on a door or I'm going to knock down a door, but I'm going to get mine. Right. You know what I mean? Now I just turn that same energy and addicted to the ministry. What's the, what's the ministry? People. People, people. I don't understand the Bible. What's so hard to understand about it? love your neighbor? What's uh, so hard to understand about it? Well, you got to forgive everybody. Good Jesus on the way out. He was like two outlaws. Two outlaws. One of them scoffing, mocking, and the other one says, hey, Jesus, can you remember me when you get to Paris? What a cool leader. Like I said, I feel like I'm in the last two minutes of the football game. Yeah. You know, getting ready. And it's excited. I didn't think I'd be excited, but like I said, remember, heaven's there. And people all have a different way of describing heaven. I believe heaven is like a gigantic slumber party that lasts for all eternity. We all got a different picture of what heaven. None of us know exactly all those details. We can read in the Word about it, but we know that there's no more pain. No more tears, no more sorrow. I mean, what, what a happy ending. So sure enough, 15 years ago approximately, I needed to wake up call. Tuna! I started heading someplace, and I heard little voices say, uh, shouldn't go there. Uh, do not enter. Uh, you ever heard those voices? Right. Hey, stupid, go the other way. Right. Finally, I didn't pay attention because I know better. You ever met anybody? I know. I know. I know better. Well, I thought I knew better. Next thing you know, it's 60 years old. At 60 years old, I'm in the Orange County Jail. It's been decades since I've been in jail. It's a little different going in there at 60 than it is when you're... 18 years old. Hey, look, it's 7 o'clock. Like, don't toe tap to get out of here. We, you, you go to football games. I see all your, I follow all you guys on Facebook. You go to the mountains. You go do this. You go do that. You go to, you know, football, get 20 hour games. You, you go to Mammoth. You go skiing. Stick around, man. Say hi to somebody.